In this video, we continue our description of spectroscopy by talking a little bit about the spectrophotometers. These are the machines where we actually take spectra. All right, there's three uh, common elements in uh, spe spectrometers. One of them is the source of the photons, the source of the electromagnetic radiation. Another one is going to be the detector, uh, which is when, uh, uh, when we detect uh, uh, the photons transmitted. And uh, there's going to be a third element, which is called a dispersion medium, uh, uh, also uh, going to be called monochromator. All right, so let's actually uh, write here a little scheme for how your typical DVD spectrometer works. Here you have the source, which is what emits uh, the photons. Okay, source. And again, this is going to be your source of photons of energy H nu or energy H C over lambda. Okay, uh, this is sent into, uh, in most common uh, spectrometers, this is going to be a dispersion medium, okay? Dispersing medium, which I'm going to draw here as a prism. And again, the name is dispersing medium. And we'll explain uh, what this does. And uh, then after this, uh, you're going to be hitting the sample. This is your cuvette. Okay, and here's where photons are absorbed or emitted. And after that, uh, this will be your I naught. This is your I. After that, uh, you just arrive at the detector, which can measure uh, the number of photons that have been transmitted. So that is not I naught, but I. Okay, in, in most common uh, spectrometers, you actually have uh, not, only, not only a sample uh, holder, you also have a blank, so you can split this film. Okay, and pass it through a reference, uh, which will your, be your, your blank cuvette. Usually, yes, it uh, has the solvent. Okay, you can take that there to the detector. Detector. Again, a comparison of the intensities here in the sample, and the detector is going to tell you uh, uh, what the difference in I and I naught are, and from there you can calculate the absorbance. Okay, so uh, what are the source of the uh, photons here? Well, a way to do this experiment is as follows. Notice that uh, what you actually are doing here is uh, plotting absorbance as a function of wavelength. But again, the idea is that what you're trying to do is uh, establish resonance between energy states. Okay, a low energy state, your EI, and then a final energy state, EF. And again, uh, you're trying to come up here with the energy of photons, and then see when you get a resonance condition here, there, or there, there. There, there, there will be different peaks in your spectrum. Now, so an idea here is to actually uh, come up with a source that is able to give you a wavelength at a time, right? So you start here with a photon of 200 nanometers, then 201, 202, 203, 204, and then sweep the entire spectrum. And while that can be done, it's actually very expensive because uh, uh, it would require uh, lasers and things like that. And uh, uh, that's actually not the way that it usually works out. Instead, what we actually do is we use a source that instead of giving you a particular wavelength at a time, it actually gives you all of the wavelengths that you're interested in at the same time. All right, so uh, again, your source, uh, usually in, in UVBs, is going to be a hot uh, a, a filament of, uh, or, or you're gonna have a deuterium or tungsten lamp. In the, in the case of a tungsten lamp, it will be a hot tungsten filament uh, that by the back body radiation uh, process, is actually going to emit uh, photons in a broad range of wavelengths, and again, covering all the way from the ultraviolet to the visible. In the case of infrared spectroscopy, something similar is used, but instead of using a, a metal filament like tungsten, or a sodium lamp, or a, a deuterium lamp, uh, is, is something uh, that is a ceramic uh, uh, matter, okay, it's called a glow bar, uh, is actually used to generate photons, but now in the infrared, not in the UV this. okay? But again, the problem is that uh, when the, uh, you use those uh, polychromatic uh, sources of radiation, you get all of the photons at the same time. The question is, well, how do you analyze, how do you know what absorption has been produced by, by what photons? Well, that's why you use something that is called a dispersing medium. Okay, and this is, uh, in, in the most elemental uh, definition, you can use a, pris a prism here that by refraction is going to be able to separate white light into the, all of the colors. So you can see how, again, that those uh, sort of prisms are able to uh, separate uh, a broad spectrum radiation into individual components. Okay, in more modern times, 
we use something that is called a diffraction gradient okay, uh, to be able to select uh, different wavelengths. So the way that uh, diffraction gradients that are mounted on the spectrometers work is as follows. Uh, again, this can be, this is the gradient. And this gradient has grooves okay, such that uh, when the uh, wavelength, uh, when the photons uh, come, and again, here you have various wavelengths, not just one frequency, but very many. Okay, the grooves here in the gradient are constructed such that there's constructive, inter destructive interference in those waves such that uh, wavelengths uh, that are different are uh, reflected here or come out at a different angle. Okay, so we have here uh, four different wavelengths. What will happen is that one of the wavelengths will come out at an angle, the other one uh, will diffract at an angle, diffract, and diffract. Okay, so notice how you're now uh, uh, coming from a source that contains all of the photons, and you're spatially being able to resolve uh, those photons according to their wavelength. Okay, so then uh, the way to select one at a time is fairly simple. You just come here and block, okay, uh, that uh, particular angle so that only the wavelength at this angle is able to uh, escape and then hit the sample. Okay, and then what you actually do is take this gradient and then you can rotate it. And as you rotate it, all right, so then uh, first if you have here a lambda 4 coming out, and if you rotate it this way, then lambda 3 will come out, rotate it a little bit more, then lambda 2 will come out, uh, rotate it more, lambda 1 will come out, and with, through that rotation you can send radiation in this direction with of a specific wavelength, okay? So that is how you go from a broad spectrum uh, uh, photon source to photons that are actually uh, separated according to the wavelength in time. Okay, so again, you can send them, uh, you will have here the gradient, and again, that will rotate, that will send different photons uh, of different wavelengths at, this, uh, at different times, and then you can just simply detect them. Okay, so that's the way that uh, diffraction, uh, diffraction gradients work in modern spectrometers. Okay, so we've explained already what the source is. We've explained the dispersion uh, medium, okay, which allows you to separate uh, the various wavelengths. And then finally, we have to uh, talk about the detectors here. Okay, so what about detectors? Well, well usually, uh, the way that modern detectors work is using uh, photodiodes. So what is a photodiode? Okay, so a photodiode is going to be a material in which uh, that is sensitive to, electro uh, to uh, photons, right? So photons come in of a particular wavelength, and what they will do is just eject an electron, okay? And what that does is it generates a positive hole here uh, in the material, okay? Because uh, uh, the orbital charge of, of nature is neutral. If there's an electron being removed from that uh, uh, photodiode, then there will be a positive hole uh, uh, left behind. And it turns out that you can actually measure uh, uh, the current due to those positive holes, and that is really proportional to the number of photons that have arrived so again, by measuring this current generated by the positive holes, you can detect how many photons uh, have uh, arrived at the detector, and from there, then you can calculate the absorbance. Okay, so this has been uh, a, a brief summary of how spectrometers work, and we've paid uh, particular emphasis to the source of photons, how are photons generated, then how photons are separated into w uh, wavelengths, and in the end, we've talked a little bit also of how you can uh, uh, measure the absorbance Came uh, through these uh, photodiode detectors.